Hello, it's Gary Fox, and uh, we got another tutorial here. Um, this is probably the last one, because uh, I think I have pretty much ran out of buttons on this thing to push. So, uh, okay, we're going to deal with a few more uh, modify functions. As you can see, I'm already in the modify menu. I want to zoom in on these uh, little red elbows I got up here. Okay. Uh, what I want to show you is this bevel function to begin with. And uh, we're going to go bevel. And uh, I am going to choose layer 0, which by default I'm leaving as black. Okay, when we go to bevel, you've got this menu up here. Uh, the of the tool age, I think is what it was called. And uh, we've got this length 1 and length 2. And you will see what those do in just a minute. We also have, uh, we can either trim or not trim. Uh, we're going to trim the first one. Okay, what the bevel does, if I uh, choose my first line, and then my second line, it will draw a diagonal between the two, and it will trim the excess if I have trim uh, clicked. Okay. Line one is defined as the first one that I click on. Line two is defined as the second length. And uh, so you can see that it cut off 15 off of the first one here and 5 off of the second one exact opposite of this one because I clicked this first. Uh, if I do it without trim, and we'll undo those, and let's set it to a more reasonable 5 and 5 because usually you're beveling at a 45 degree angle. We'll go click, click, and you'll see that it does the 45 degree angle there between the two. Uh, it did 5 and 5, but you'll see also that uh, it left the uh, line in there. And that's pretty handy sometimes. Sometimes you want to leave that line. Sometimes you don't. So you have to kind of look at trim. Figure out whether you want to trim it or not. Uh, you can always trim, of course, by going to the trim function to double trim. And uh, so if you mess up, you can unmess up real easy. Also notice that the new line was drawn at the layer that I chose Normally, you use it at the same layer of where your where your lines are that you're trimming. So if I do a five and a five here, I got a red line this time. So uh, that's basically the bevel function. Okay, we also have a round function that works similar. Uh, you can trim also with it, and uh, we do want to trim this time, and we're going to leave it with a radius of ten. So as I do that, you see what that does. And so you can make rounded corners. That's real good if you're drawing casings, castings, I'm sorry. Or uh, it's actually good for a lot of things. If I was drawing sidewalks, that would be a perfect little thing to show sidewalks or clover leaves or whatever. So those are two handy functions. Okay, another function that I want to talk about is one called the, uh, get my brain to work in here, the stretch function. And to do that, we'll zoom in on uh, one of these boxes. So, stretch function, it says define the first edge. And I think I done messed up. So, start all over. Go to stretch, define the first corner. And, uh, so I'll define the first corner. We'll draw a corner around an area that we're wanting to stretch. We'll stretch the whole side of this thing. Okay, find a reference point, and so I will make it the midpoint of this line. And uh, now I'm going to go free positioning. As you can see, I can move that whole line because the whole line was in the box, so it's not getting stretched. But the things that we crossed when we drew the uh, window around it are being stretched. And if I wanted to make it perfectly 
just increase the size of the rectangle. I just did that by making the uh, thing in vertical only, the positioning. So that's pretty much stretch function. Uh, it's interesting. You can get a lot of interesting shapes. Let's do one more. We'll stretch. As you see, I don't use it very often. So we go to our little box here. So now I'm going to stretch this line and this line. I'm now ready to specify a point. So I chose an endpoint. Now I'm going to go free positioning. And uh, I end up with this pointy looking thing. And uh, make interesting stuff that way. Alright. Now we're going to deal with what I call the double functions. Um, these functions save you key clicks because they do two things at one time. So the first one we're going to use is rotate two, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose that box there, and then uh, let's zoom in a little bit more. And uh, I'm going to rotate it about this circle, but I'm going to rotate it so that it stays upright. So I'm now ready. I've chose my thing. I choose the absolute reference point, which is the point that we're going to rotate the whole thing about. And now I choose the relative reference point, and I'm going to use the center of this box. And I'm going to use... 60 degrees, I'm going to rotate that thing 60 degrees, and I'm going to rotate the box itself back at negative 60, which should have it upright. I'm going to do that, and that's exactly what we got. If you remember when I did the uh, clock, I did a uh, Roman numeral clock, and Roman numeral clocks, the Roman numerals are rotated about the, uh, about the center point. If you do one, all of the normal Arabic letter number clocks have uh, all the uh, numbers always upright so this would be the way that you would rotate those around that center. You can get in trouble by doing that because you have to think about what you're doing and which point you want to use for your relative rotate point. I could have done the edges of the box or I could have done a midpoint on one of these lines. It depends on what you're trying to do, so you do need to think a little bit ahead. Okay, the next one we're going to do is move and rotate, and it does it exactly in that order. So I'm going to select my object, which will be this box, and what I'm going to do is uh, i got to select a reference point, and in this case I want mid, so I'm going to use the midpoint of that line. And I'm going to want to put it right on the midpoint of this. I happen to know that that line is at 30 degrees, so I'm going to want to rotate this at 30 degrees. And I have my line, my box sitting right on my line. Sometimes you want, need to do that. You need to move something and then have it sitting on a line, and the line is at an angle. So it comes in handy. One function I wanted to point out uh, that I kind of forgot so in this info, if you press it, there is one on angle. So let's say you have an angle and you don't know exactly what it is. Uh, you can choose the first line, and I drew one that was horizontal. I could do the second line, and I know it's 313.636072. So I could actually, if I wanted to, move that box this move and rotate function I can go to the midpoint I'm going to go to the midpoint of this and luckily that number is still visible in the uh, command line because I have no way of remembering that And the box shows up right there on the uh, on the point on the line. 
So that's pretty much uh, all of the functions that I know of on this thing. I think I've done them all at one time or another. Um, if I have not, or if you forget one, which probably you will, the best thing I can recommend is you open up a new drawing, you create some junk on it, just like I'm doing on this screen, and then you, uh, you try it and test it, and that's the only way that you can really find out. Uh, there are some letter functions that I think I've not dealt with. Uh, let's see, let's go back here to letters. And we can create it. You can do uh, different line spacing. Uh, you have the different positions inside wherever you're going to click to put the thing. And you have a few symbols. I never seem to have the symbols that I want, but there are a few symbols in here. And uh, I've never had much luck with this different kind of text. Um, Maybe I don't know what I'm doing yet. So anyhow, that's uh, that's pretty much. Yeah, you can load a whole text if you got a text file. You can load the whole text in there, which will save you a lot of typing in this little little window. So uh, that's pretty much all of the functions. Uh, in the very first video, I had I had the uh, website for LibreCAD. Consider going to there and donate them a little bit of money. It's a good program. And uh, uh, you're not going to get a CAD program, commercial software that's equal to this, unless you pay a pretty decent amount of money. Uh, the guy's working, producing a good product. Uh, let's, let's send a little bit toward his way. Anyhow, appreciate it. Thank you for listening. This is Gary Fox of Create Make.